Welcome to part 4, and in this final part we're going to composite all our elements together and hopefully get something that looks like this. And let's just start by opening Nuke, and then press R to read in your files and locate your Houdini uh, scene. And go to Render, and we're going to start by importing the character one. So we'll put the character one here, and we'll put down a reformat to make sure they're all uh, 1080p. This one already is, but uh, the smoke one won't be, so it's uh, important and a good practice to do this for all of them. We're also going to read in our smoke. I'm going to do version 2, and because I did another version. And I'm going to do the same reformat here. We're going to merge these. And then we're going to read in our, let's see, our core particles. And do the same thing. I'm just going to copy it and put it into the chain. And finally, our string particles. And there we go. And now this is how they all look, just straight out of the render, no compositing at all. They're trying to get something like this. So there's a bit of work to be done, but it's really not that bad. And we have all the tools we need to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set all of these merges to plus, because this effect is purely additive. We're only adding onto light, uh, onto our scene. We're not actually removing any, which the over function does by removing the alpha. Uh, or it removes the alpha from, from uh, whatever's coming in. So let's set the multi plus, and we're also going to shuffle out the different passes that we created in the render. So by using a shuffle, we can separate these um, AOEs that we have. So I'm going to shuffle the geolite, and I'm going to copy this, and I'm also going to shuffle the HDRI. And then I'm going to put down a call correct node so we can call correct this individually, and then I'm going to merge them together. And then I'm going to press C, sorry, press K to create this copy, and I'm going to do the A into this reformat, because this will copy the alpha from the original one, and then we'll use the color from this. And I'm just going to plug this in. So what this does is now we have individual control of our layers, and I can uh, boost up or lower the geo light if I so want. And I do actually want to boost a little bit. I think I'm going to set this to around 3 to make it stronger. And I'm going to lower the saturation a little bit as well, uh, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And I'm going to boost this one as well to around 1.15, just to make it a little bit brighter. And for the smoke, we're going to do the same thing. Let's shuffle out the two layers that we have. So I'm going to do a shuffle. And I think I changed the name every so slightly, so yours might be a little bit different, but I'm going to shuffle out the geolite, and I'm going to hold control to put down one of these to just make it a little bit more organized. And then I'm also going to shuffle out the HDRI. And do the same thing here. Let's do a color correct for each of them. Um, and let's move it back and then merge them together. Just press M to merge and do plus and this one as well. Well, it doesn't matter because there's no alpha, but I just like to press just in case. And then uh, press K well, without selecting anything. Press K and put it in here with the A onto the reformat and the B onto the plus. And then we have the same controls here as we have for the other one. And those are the only things I want to shuffle these ones. So I'm just going to control individually. And we're also going to want to download a thing called Exponential Glow, which doesn't come natively with Houdini, but there's a gizmo you can download and then easily use. And I'm going to provide the link for that in the description. And let's download the gizmo. And then if you just copy the whole text file, you can just paste it in if you want to get it easily. Uh, and then you get this node right here. And I'm going to plug this in under the core particles. And I'm going to set, uh, actually, I'm going to do a call correct beforehand uh, right here. I'm just going to make it 10 times stronger just so I can really see what it's doing. And then I'm going to remove add source. I'm going to set the fall off to one point uh, around 1. And 1.02 is what I used. And I'm going to set the intensity to 9. And oh, something else that's important is we're doing a pure red. And if we do that, we're not going to see, we're only going to see red. But if you desaturate it a little bit, we're going to introduce some white. And it's going to look a lot better as the cores become really hot and nice. Uh, so I'm going to do it to around 0.8 for the saturation. And the size I'm going to use is 0.22. And this gives a nice glow, uh, glow core center. And we're just going to copy the merge and uh, place this one into our chain as well. Now let's work on our smoke. And I'm going to start with the geolite. I'm just going to bump the contrast because I want uh, the core to be a bit hotter. 
and I'm going to lower the gain a bit and I'm actually going to do another color correct where I'm going to lower the saturation of it uh, and also lower the gamma a bit try and get something that looks closer to this uh, I think this is a good point and then for the actual HDRI I'm just going to bump this down to around 0.3 uh, this one doesn't need to be too present uh, and this, if you merge this together, I think this, yeah, this works a lot better. Uh, it creates a soft, nice fall off. And I'm also gonna do now a blur, um, just to introduce even more red into the frame. So if I blur this thing uh, around 600, and then uh, 600, and then just merge it back in here. Uh, it just adds some nice subtle haze to the whole uh, image, and you can also make this stronger if you want to. But I'm just gonna just gonna keep it as it is, and I'm gonna do yet another blur, which I'm gonna set to five. Uh, just a very slight blur because uh, I want to introduce a little bit more uh, atmospheric detail, uh, and then I'm gonna do copy my exponential glow and set it to the fall off to 1.3, the intensity to two the size to 1.5 and then uh, the squeeze to 100 because when you do this you get this very nice streaky it almost looks like a lens flare well it's emulating a lens flare um, and if you add this back on top we get this nice effect uh, that's well let me just boost it so you can see uh, that really makes it feel like we're shooting this uh, on a real camera and next let's add a little bit more detail to our core and I'm going to do this by using a random function just to vary the intensity of it so put down a color correct node and click add expression and just type random and this will ask for a seed value which is going to be one in our case and the frame uh, which will be what's changing every frame uh, and I'm going to multiply this by our frequency which will be 1.4 in our case uh, and this will give us a random value each frame and we want to multiply this by how high we want the amplitude of this random value to be so I'm going to multiply it by 0.4 and then we want to put that inside a parenthesis on both ends. And then at the end, we are adding on top our starting value, which will be 0.9. So now this will go between 0.9 and 1.3. Um, and you'll see it ever so slightly. I can boost it a lot. Uh, if I go to the red expression and just put this to maybe times 3, you'll be able to see uh, that is flickering uh, if it loads. But uh, that is a little bit too high for our case. So let's just go back to our 0.4. And this will just add some slight detail uh, into our render and get it closer. And we're also going to desaturate our main. When we're adding this on top, it's, uh, it's, it's making it a bit too red for my taste. So I'm just going to do a color correct note for the first one and desaturate it to around 0.2, which will just subtly help it brighten up the core a little bit. Uh, next, we're going to be working on making these strings look a little bit better. I should have probably rendered them with a bit more particles as they're a little bit sparse, but we're going to play them with really low intensity, so it's going to be okay. And let's start by just lowering the gain uh, on our first input here. We're going to do an exponential low after this as well. I'm going to do 0 0.036, barely visible here, uh, but that's okay. We're going to make the exponential low a bit stronger. So we'll just copy your call correct, and I'm going to make this one point. Uh, 048, uh, sorry, 0.48, and put the saturation to 0.87 so that it becomes a little bit, uh, makes it look a little bit hotter when it's white. And then I'm going to just copy an exponential glow that we have up our chain, and I'm going to set the fall off to 0.7, I'm going to set the intensity to 7, the size to 0.4, and the squeeze uh, stays at 1. And this just makes it really soft, uh, and I think it looks a lot nicer that way. And then we're going to merge it back in. And now this is a more subtle effect. Let's find a frame where we have some. Yeah, now this one looks a lot better. Uh, just a nice little subtle touch. And it seems like our smoke is a little bit uh, too sparse. Let's make it a bit stronger uh, to match this one we had before. Uh, I think we could go even more on it, maybe lower the contrast a little bit. Actually, let's keep it that what it is. Uh, desaturate it even more. And I think, yeah, I think that's starting to get there. And let's finish it off by adding some distortion uh, into our new care. And 
it would usually look better if there's uh, some footage behind that it's going to break up, but we can uh, also see the effect on the character, and so I think it'll be a nice little touch. Let's start by adding a noise node, which we're going to set the size to around 17, because we want it to be pretty uh, high frequency. And then we're going to do an expression on the C, where, which is frame times 0.5, just to keep this one constantly animated. And we're going to reformat this one down to 1080 by or 1920 by 1080 as well. And then we're going to do a multiplication. We're going to just multiply it by 2, just to make it a bit stronger, so that we can also do an addition, which we're going to use to subtract, um, just to add constraints so we have both negative and positive values. And with this, I'm going to multiply. Uh, well, I can show you what a word looks like first. We're going to do a copy here. So we're going to copy our channel, uh, our alpha channel from this. Uh, into uh, the store channel here, which is called forward U. So let's copy the alpha into forward U and then use an I distort, which we're going to take the UV channel and set to forward. And then when you play with the UV scale, now you can see that it's distorting up the image, uh, obviously way too much. But we only want to do this where the effect is actually happening. So let's isolate that area. Uh, but first we can set the distortion to maybe like 15 so we can see it. Um, and we can use the smoke to say where this is going to be. So if we take the alpha channel of the smoke and multiply it by our noise, uh, like this, and then we set the value to zero and invert it, we'll see that we're only getting noise in this area. Uh, so there, we're going to only distort the area that we actually want to distort. And let's move this down a little bit. Uh, and I think we want to blur it a little bit because it's a little bit sharp right now. So if you set the blur right here, uh, we can set that to around 150. And then we can do a call correct on the alpha uh, to just make sure that it's a little bit more visible here. So let's do 1.8 on the alpha. And then we can set our distort to around 15, uh, which I think will be a nice distortion. Uh, just a little subtle. You can, you can make it 20 as well if you want to see the effect a bit more. Uh, but that should be it, and we should have the final composite now. And this is our finished product. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial series. I want to thank you so much for watching all the way through. Tag us if you end up making and posting this effect. We go by ROV effects on all socials, and make sure to subscribe to not miss future tutorials.